I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Black Brant 4B30. This is made by Rocketarium and this is a scale model of a series of sounding rockets that are still in use today. So as with every kit we're going to want to open this up and make sure we have all the parts. So we have quite a bit packed into this box. Um, first of all find the instructions here because that will have a parts list in it. And also be careful that a lot of times they'll pack the parachute um, and sometimes the decals inside the pages here. Oh, we've got a applicator stick there. And some water slide decals. And some vinyl decals. Alright, so turn this around. Alright, to the back page here. Let's see what we've got. Okay, water slide and vinyl decals. Plastic parachute. Okay, we should have some fins here. Alright, so we've got some basswood fins. Three of those. Alright, so we have a second stage assembly bag here. All right, and that's this one. Okay, so, oh, here we go. This is the first stage assembly um, where we've got a reduction in tube size here. So this is the, the big body tube that already has a slightly smaller body tube glued inside of it. All right, and then we've got a 7-inch tube Alright, the collar tube is this one right here, and mine was kind of bunched up against a corner underneath one of the other packages. So that's that part. Alright. Then we've got a BT-60 four and a half inch, that would be this guy. It's got a little X on it. Okay, and then our transition, it's this big 3D printed part here. And then the balsa stick, we saw that earlier, that was folded in with our instructions. And that will just be used for applying glue. Alright, then we've got the entire second stage package here. Now the model is a single stage model, but the, the actual sounding rocket is two stage. Okay, so all these things are in there already. And yep, they are. Okay, then we've got a small parts bag here, and this consists of the shock cord, launch lugs, uh, launch lug standoffs, which are some of the small little pieces of balsa there. Um, and then the other little pieces of balsa are the, the trim pieces here that help give you the, the scale appearance. Okay, um, ejection baffle kit there, that's all self-contained. And I must say, these are really great. I love Rocketarium's baffles. I have never had one of those fail on me. And then we have our motor mount kit. Okay, and we'll just kind of run through that quickly. And it looks like all of those parts are there as well. So it looks like our kit is complete, which is what we want to know. And so I'm going to go ahead and put most of this stuff out of the way for now, and then we will get started on the build. So the first two things on our instructions are the two sub-assemblies here. So we've got the baffle and the motor mount. We'll go ahead and start with the motor mount assembly. Okay, now some of the parts may be inside like you see here. So this is a spacer tube. This is not actually part of the rocket. Okay, and this is a spacer for putting inside the uh, motor mount tube if you are flying um, either C11 or D series Estes engines. Right? If you're flying uh, a full length E 
or if you're flying um, a composite motor that's got the external retaining ring there, then you won't need that spacer. So I'm just going to set mine aside for the moment. Okay, and each of these sub-assemblies has their own little instruction manual here. Alright, so first of all we need to place some wood glue. You can use white glue for this as well, but you're going to get a stronger and quicker bond with wood glue. And you can use the applicator stick that came with the kit. Um, I'm just going to use a cotton applicator here. In fact, you don't even have to use the applicator, it just makes things easier. But we're going to put some glue about three quarters of an inch down from the forward end. So I'm just going to unscrew my glue cap All right, and get some glue on the end of an applicator here and then looking down um, it's better to be a little bit too far down than too far up okay and then we're going to take the opposite end here so here's our thrust ring All right, I'm going to put that in the aft end away from the glue and then the spacer is going to go in flush. So we're just going to use that and then we're going to press that in until it's flush and that's going to push all the glue forward. Take this out immediately so that you don't accidentally glue it into the motor mount. And then you can see from the top here that it's pushed the glue forward and made its own fillet going all the way around there. Okay, next we're going to measure um, 95 millimeters from the aft end. Okay, and just to make sure I don't mess up here, I'm going to write aft inside my tube here so I don't get it reversed at some point. Alright, so from that end, 95 millimeters is right there, and this should put us right above the thrust ring. So now just cut about a three millimeter um, notch there, and if, if it's resisting a lot, that means you're you're hitting the um, ring there, and just move up a little bit. Okay, and then you're going to put on the engine clip. All right, so one end has this fancy bend in it that goes to the aft. All right, the right angle there goes in our slot. And now you should be able to see there, it's right on top of the thrust ring. Alright, so now um, we're going to put on the locking ring. That's this grayish black one here. Okay, and that's going to fit over the clip. Okay, and then. Um, stop at one inch from the aft end, 25 millimeters there. So I'm going to take that off again. And I'm going to mark twenty-five millimeters right there. Okay, now we, we're also going to need a mark at six millimeters or a quarter inch from the aft end, and this will be where the aft centering ring is going to go. So that's going to be right here. Okay, and then the forward centering ring is going to go just right over where that insertion point is. Alright, so we've got two um, rings here. The aft one has the deeper notch cut into it, and that's going to go right over the engine clip there. Okay, and then put on the retainer ring there, and then the forward ring that has the smaller notch, that notch is going to go right like that. Okay, so just make, dry fit everything to make sure it's working the way it should. Okay, and now for my aft ring, I'm going to pull it all the way down, so it's just barely hanging on there. And... Now just run a bead of glue around this. 
You can just squirt it out of your glue thing if you want. Since I've already got this handy, I'm going to use it. Okay, and I'm going to slide that back to where my mark is. I just covered my mark up with glue, but my mark is right there. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this forward. There's my mark. Okay, so the aft face of the ring should be at that six millimeter mark. And then you can take your finger here and form a fillet with the excess glue. Okay, if you need to, you can add some glue, but it is a good idea to have a fillet there for extra strength. I wanted to say stability, but it really doesn't have anything to do with stability unless you lose your engine. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing here. In this case, I need to go up to that. Now this ring doesn't require a lot of strength. All it's really doing is holding the engine clip in place. I don't have to worry about fillets on this one. Just get it glued in nicely. But of course, if you do have the excess glue there, it looks nicer and is going to dry quicker if you do smooth that in. All right, and just make sure you don't get glue on the, the upper surfaces of any of these rings. Okay, and then finally, for my forward ring, I'm just going to tuck it down a little bit here. Um, this one is going to experience the strain from thrust, so we want to make sure that's got a good fillet on it as well. that back up. Again, this is going to go just below that insertion point for the clip. Okay. Try and get that as even and square as possible. Smooth that in. Okay, And at that point, this is done. So we're going to just let this dry. That glue needs to be well dried before we try and put that into the body tube. Okay, next we've got the baffle assembly here. So just pull it out of its bag. And in this kit, the baffle does not have its own instructions, probably because it's a little bit of an odd size. So we have to come back to our main instructions here. But if you've built any of Rocketarium's baffles before, this is just going to go together in the same way. It's just a, a, not a standard tube-sized one. Okay, so on this baffle plate, um, we've got a hole in the middle, and that's where our screw eye is going to go. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and just screw that in. So we thread the hole. All right, once you can see threads on the other side, that's enough. Back that out. All right, and now I do want to be able to squirt my glue here. Because here I want to squirt glue through that hole. All right, go ahead and leave a fairly heavy dollop on there. Okay, and then we're going to put this into our threaded hole again. And I want this to go just until I can barely see the threads there in the glue. You don't want to get the, the smooth shank there down in or it won't grip. Okay, so right there on that side. And now that's poked through here, and I'm going to cover that with glue. So that makes a really nice high strength bond there. And so we, we don't want this to ever pull out. So that's, that's a good way to do it. Okay, and then. Um, We'll go ahead and 
run a bead of glue right alongside the tube here. Okay, we're going to take the other baffle plate and just insert that in. Let's try it the other way. There we go. It's tight, but it fits. Okay, and we want to leave just a couple millimeters there uh, along the edge. And then go ahead and form a fillet as well. So we get this really good and strong, because this is going to take on quite a bit of force from the ejection charge. Now when we do the other one, um, we're actually going to, since we have a handle basically here, we're going to kind of put this in like that, all right, and then we'll pull it back and that'll help form a fillet all by itself there. Okay, so just make sure that's going to work the first time. All right, I'm going to put another bead of glue along here. Insert that sideways, bring it in, and then pull back on it. Okay, and once again, you leave yourself just a little bit of tube edge there, and then go ahead and make a fillet here. Now, be careful when you're doing this that you don't get glue on the outside like I've got there, so we'll clean that off in a minute. You also don't want to plug the baffle holes. So once we've got that on, go ahead and wipe off any excess there. And then um, you can take the handle of an applicator or a dowel or even a little bit of paper. Okay, and just make sure those holes are cleared. And then that entire assembly can be set aside to dry as well. In our next step, we're going to mark the main body tube here of the primary stage. And there are two marking guides in here. We need the top one, which is for the fins. Okay, and you can cut this out with scissors or with your hobby knife. Uh, do make sure there's nothing on the back that you want to save. Okay, um, it, the only thing on the back of this is the parts list, so we've already gone through that. If you don't want to destroy your instructions, just make a photocopy of this page and cut that out. Just in case we need the information while we're doing it. Okay, so A is going to be a fin. Um, it's actually what they call the red fin on here if you go with their color scheme. All right, B is going to be a launch lug. All right, C is another red fin. And then D is a white fin. So once you've got this cut out, this is going to wrap around the narrower part 
of the body tube here, but I'm going to put it right against the thicker wall body tube because we're going to need to transfer lines onto both. Okay, so once you get those lined up there, you just tack that down with a little bit of masking tape. Okay, and so now we're going to just put a little tick mark here on either side of each arrow. Okay, and I'm going to put on here red fin RF. Okay, over here this is going to be a launch log one. LL okay, and here once more we'll put on a red fin and then our last one is the white fin. Okay, I'm going to take this back off. Go ahead and you want to hang on to this until you finish the model, just in case you need to reposition where a fin went. Next, uh, either using a door frame or a fin marking guide like this one. Actually, a tube marking guide is what it is. All right, and this just gives us a whole bunch of basically corner edges. Okay, so we're going to run the fin lines about a third of the way up the body. We're making sure that we get both tubes there. All right, the launch lug, um, they should say to put it, I think, two thirds of the way up. Yep. So, and it's not going to hurt anything if you do the entire length, which I'm going to do, it just gives me a, a longer sight line. You should have a total of four lines. The fin line should be equally spaced and the launch lug line in between two of those fin lines. Next we're going to assemble the fins and starting with the fins themselves uh, you need to decide if you want to use any type of treatment on the surface. Since these are basswood they're much tighter grain than balsa has and I found that a lot of times if you just sand these really smooth and then use a, a filling sandable primer that's usually enough for them. Okay, but if you do want to um, either add some sanding sealer uh, beforehand, uh, go ahead and do that at this point. All right, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start with shaping the fins here. So the first thing I'm going to do is sand the faces with um, some 150 grit sandpaper here. So it's fairly smooth, but I can still see pronounced grain there. Um, so after I do some shaping, I'm going to come back and do some more sanding here with 220 grit. Uh, the only uh, streamlining we need to do for this is to round the leading edges. Okay, the, the tip edge and the trailing edge here can just be sanded square. And in fact, if you want to put all these together, um, you can go ahead and just lay down a piece of sandpaper and do all those edges at once. Just drag it across. And basically you want to do this just until you don't see the, the charring from the laser cuts there.
Okay. Now you don't want to sand really any of this here, and especially don't sand off these little projections. Those are going to be necessary to fit some of the trim pieces on a little bit later on. Okay. Now if you want, you can carefully um, get this on an edge or use a sanding block here. All right, and sand everything forward of those two not uh, two little projections there. Okay, you could even if you really want to take a little file or a little emery board and sand in there. It's really not that critical. I'm just going to give it a few strokes here so to give a better glueable surface. All right, but you also don't want to sand it so much that you lose that little notch either. So that's good enough there. All right, let me find the one I sanded. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just round off the leading edge here. And I'm going to do that starting with some 100 grit sandpaper to start it. And here I'm just going to uh, knock down the 90 degree edges there, first of all. Alternate back and forth. All right, once you've done the initial removal of those edges, then just start rotating your wrist a little bit to round that over. And then periodically check it in cross section. So that's still looking blunted, but not very rounded. pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to take the other two fins and sand them off camera. And then once I have all three of them shaped, I am going to go ahead and do some additional sanding on the faces and on my edges here with some 220 grit sandpaper in order to get the smooth as possible finish there. Now that my fins are sanded and shaped, we need to assemble these trim pieces here. And so for each fin, we're going to have one of these shoe plates and then two of these reinforcements. And some of them on mine, some were still stuck together, some weren't. All right, but you'll have two of those for each fin. And then some more. These are little tiny reinforcements here. These are going to go on the fronts of the fins. Okay, we don't need those at the moment. Okay, so I'm just going to set, set these up in sets. Okay, now there are two straight pieces here. These are the standoffs for the launch lugs. So I'm going to put those aside as well with the launch lugs. Okay, so again, two of the rear supports, two front supports, and then for this one also. <clears throat> okay, so if we put these together, uh, and I'm not gluing anything here, I'm just going to show how the, the final product is going to come out. So this shoe plate goes over the two little protrusions there. Okay, and then we'll have um, one of these reinforcements here, and it's going to lay flush with the aft end of the fin. And then up here on the forward end, these little tiny guys here are going to match up with the notch in the fin. Okay, so that's how they're going to be laid out on each side of the fin there. And we need to taper these as well. Okay, so the idea here is to kind of blend this um, leading edge and this tip edge into the fin. Okay. Now these are really kind of delicate and so you may have some trouble just using um, sandpaper. I'm going to try here with a, an emery board and see if that gives me more control. It's 
That's working reasonably well for shaping there. Haha, <laughs> blew the dust off and blew half of them away. Alright, and then we get the forward edge up here. Okay, so these should be coming down pretty much to a knife edge on the back edge here. Alright, and then I'm going to sand away a little bit of the fuzziness here. Okay, so there's one, I'm going to, we'll call it for this fin here. <clears throat> okay, and then we're going to need one that goes on the opposite side. So, let's move these. I like to have this here in front of me so that I make sure I get my orientation straight. So now we need to, to bevel this edge over here. Same thing here, and these guys are really tiny. small for my fingers. There we go. here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the same emery board here just to sand off any little nubs and such that are left over from the cutting process. All right, and then I'm going to sand the top side but not the bottom side yet. Um, and you just Pick the cleaner side to be the top side. Because the bottom side will sand when we're ready to put the whole assembly onto the body tube. Now for this I'm going to use um, some uh, slower bonding wood glue. Uh, white glue would also be a good choice here. But I just want something with a little bit more working time so I can move things around if needed. Okay, so first I'm going to put on one of the aft pieces here. That's for the other side. Okay, so this is for this side. Okay, move these out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to take my, this is the back side of that trim piece. And here I'm just using a little stick as an applicator. We don't want this to be really heavy because uh, it'll squirt out and then we just have to try and clean it up. And It's hard enough sanding this stuff without glue on it. So I'm just going to make a really thin film. 
here. Okay, now this needs to be flush on the edges here with the aft edge of the fin and the root edge of the fin. Squeeze that down here just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll let that dry for a few seconds. And while that is happening, I'm going to use one of these really tiny little pieces here. Okay, and that one's going to mount right over the notch, so we need to line up the notches here. Just like that. Alright, now I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to use this little shoe plate here as a support out on the, the tip edge there so that I'm not bending this at an angle. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So here's my aft support. Again, I don't want this to be really heavy, or we'll just end up with a lot of excess glue that I have to clean up later. Okay, and now we're going to put that shoe plate on. And again, this should be oriented so that the rear is flush with the aft end of the fin. Right, that should pop in there. You can just put this down on a flat surface and press. Okay, and then check to make sure that it's all still perpendicular to the shoe plate. And that one is. Okay, so that's one fin fully assembled. A little bit of glue there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the other two fins off camera and then come back. Here I have my fins with all of the trim on them and I had let these dry overnight you don't need to go that long but definitely make sure these dry for a good two to three hours before we're going on to the next step because we're going to put some strain on them so for this we're going to need this um, body tube here it's a, a BT60 body tube and so one's got a little X drawn on it here um, this is going to be used basically as a form for our next part of sanding. Okay, so I'm going to take some 150 grit sandpaper and kind of wrap this around the form. And then we're going to take the shoe plate here and simply pull that across. And this is going to impart a curvature to that shoe plate which will help it conform to the body tube easily. Okay. And you, you want to do this just a little bit at a time and then take your body tube and place the fin on like this. Okay. You'll know you have enough sanding done when the forward part of the fin here no longer has a gap. Okay. So I'm going to have to sand this down a little bit more.
that's about what we want there. And notice now how much thinner that shoe plate is compared to one that hasn't been done yet. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other two fins off camera and then come back. All of my fin shoe plates now have been sanded and you can see they're all very much thinner than they used to be. All right. Now I've checked them all in the body tube and they fit but we're not going to glue them on quite yet. Our next task is to insert the motor mount. Alright, and so the aft end of the motor tube should be flush with the aft end of the rocket. So I'm just going to do a dry fit first. Here's my completed motor mount. Alright, and that's really snug right there. So this is why we want to do that dry fit. Alright, if I go the other direction, that too. Okay, so this is an easy fix. Just take some sandpaper here. I'm going to use 100 grit. And just sand around the circumference of the ring. Okay, go ahead and do this for both rings if you need it. I'm just turning as I sand back and forth here. Okay, then we'll go ahead and try that back in once more. Okay, still a little bit snug. So we just continue sanding around it. We're actually you want this, you don't want that to be really firm. That's about where it should be. Um, because when you hit this with the glue, the cardboard and the wood do tend to expand just a little bit. And so if it's already really snug, it may lock up on you when you try and glue it. This next part, you can either use the little wooden stick that came with this. Um, I just I'm going to use a, an applicator here, as I just keep a supply of these on hand. So we're first going to put a ring of glue, approximately three and a half inches up. So here I'm just going to measure from the tip of my applicator down, and put my thumb where that measurement is. And now I'm just going to take and dip this down into my glue. Okay. You want a fairly heavy amount on there because it's going to go all the way around the inside of this. And I'm going to insert this till I hit my thumbnail and then bring it around to coat the inside of the tube. Okay, and then check inside there. You may not be able to see it with the, the camera. Okay, it looks like I need a little bit more on one part of it. Okay, so I just need to repeat the process here. Alright, now don't lose your stick or your applicator quite yet. And now we're going to put this in, but not get it up into the glue yet. And instead, now we're going to put another ring of glue just inside the aft end of the body tube here. You can just let the motor mount roll around like that. Okay. Now I prefer to have my engine clip on the same side as my launch lug. So here's my launch lug line. I'm going to line this up and now push it in and do it as quickly as you can 
and then one motion there. And then I'm going to take my ruler just to make sure I've got it flush. Okay, and if, sometimes you can still twist this a little bit if you get a little off. So uh, if you look inside there, if you want, you can put a fillet around there to give it more strength because nothing ruins your day like having a motor mount failure and it goes shooting up through your rocket. While it might be spectacular, it also tends to be expensive and not especially safe. Okay. Just be careful as you do this that you don't get glue down inside the motor mount there. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside to dry. For the next step, you're going to need the um, upper part of the main body tube here. So this is the about seven inch long piece, not the shorter piece here of BT-60 that we were using as a form. This is not part of the structure of the rocket, and you can just set it aside. Okay. You're also going to need your ejection baffle here. And the first thing is to go ahead and mark the center of this. All right, so I'm out here at about 64 millimeters, so we're going to make it 32, roughly, should be halfway along. And then we're also going to need the shock cord. Right. If you haven't removed it already, this will still be in the small parts bag with the launch lugs and such. Okay, so we're going to glue this in two places. And I'm actually going to do it backwards from what we have here just so I can let my uh, motor mount continue drying there before I start messing with the lower body tube again. Okay doesn't really make any difference which way you do it. Um, so I'm going to first of all tie my shock cord onto the screw eye. And just put a double knot or two half hitches into there. If you prefer to use Kevlar shock cords you can certainly do that but it's not included with the kit. All right, so pull this from all directions, make sure it knots down good and tight. And then go ahead and put just a little bit of glue right on the knot. Use either white glue or wood glue. Other types of glues may melt the rubber, and we don't want that. Just going to work a little bit of glue into the knot there. Okay, make sure that um, this free end is not going to get in the way of the baffle itself. That one is fine. Okay, so the way this is going to work is the end with the screw eye and the shock cord that's going to go into the aft end of the smaller body tube here. And just pull it all the way through. Okay, I haven't glued anything yet, I'm just dry fitting, so that's going to go in like that. And then on the main part of the body tube, that's going to go in like that. Okay. And as I said, you can do this in either order. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the main body part now here. So I'm just going to put on a bead of white glue or wood glue here, just inside the body tube. All right, you want that to be an even bead around there, um, but not too heavy, or it tends to cause a little bit of warpage there um, that can affect your finish. All right, now I'm going to insert this, and I'm just going to give it a turn back and forth as I do so. Um, and that actually feels kind of loose, but I think we'll be okay. So bring it up to the, the center line there. And now I'm going to let this dry for at least five minutes 
before we put the upper part of the body tube on. Now that the glue is dry on the aft part of the coupler there, we can go ahead and glue the other end. And so when we do this, we want to try and keep as much of the shock cord out of the goo, the glue, as possible. Um, and actually I'm going to do something here a little bit different. So usually we put the glue inside here. I'm going to do it on the coupler itself. And the reason for that is I run into a problem quite often with these kits where when I put these two together, that seam um, will often be a little mismatched, uh, mainly because of differences in expansion due to the glue and such. And it's always kind of hard to get rid of that seam. So if I put the glue on here and let it squirt out and wipe off the excess, then that will help fill in that seam at the same time. And it also keeps the glue off the shock cord. Okay, so for this I'm going to use um, a little bit slower setting glue here. Uh, white glue would also work in this instance. So I'm going to put that all the way around. Okay, and again, I don't want this too soupy here, so I'm going to spread this out and wipe some of it away. Alright, and then I have another tissue or two handy so that I can wipe off that excess right away. Now I can go ahead and stick that inside there. Okay, again, twist it back and forth. And now wipe off the excess glue. I'm just going to hold this together firmly uh, for about 60 seconds to let the glue grab there. You can see there's just a little bit poking out around that seam, and I'll be able to sand that fairly easily. Now while the body tubes are drying, um, we can go ahead and prepare the launch lugs. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the standoffs onto the launch lugs as it shows here. Okay, but I'm going to wait on attaching them to the body tube until after I attach the fins. And the reason for that is that I'm going to try and use a fin jig to make sure my fins are straight. Uh, and that fin jig will not work if the um, launch lugs get in the way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead here and just take some of my wood glue. Okay, and I'm just going to run this along an edge of one of those standoffs. Okay, and again here, nice thin even film is going to work better than a bunch of drippy glue. And then simply attach that to a launch lug. And then sight down to make sure it's straight, which that one's a little bit off. Okay, and you can set that one aside. And then do the same thing with the second one here.
Okay. And let both of those dry. 